What's going on gamers? I am DBM Gamer, and today I want to talk about the mystery of the Amkar. But before I get into that, I have a few shoutouts to give. So I want to give a shout out to Richie Gilmore, John Kim, Gabe Wynn Williams, Eric Martinez, and Joe and Ashley Yokley for following me on Twitter. Dragons. Everyone loves the mythology of them. They are represented in multiple cultures throughout the world, from the Indian Kelianag, which was defeated by Lord Krishna in Hinduism, to Welsh mythology in which Merlin watches a red dragon and a white dragon fight, predicting victory of the Welsh over the Saxons. Well, there are dragons in Destiny as well. Dragons that seem to originate from the void, dragons that made promises, and dragons that are thought to be no more. We get quite a bit of information from an interaction between a warlock and a hunter. You try and try and try to explain, but no one ever understands, no one who's not a warlock, who hasn't spent a dozen years scouring the ruins looking for one string of symbols, one clean code, one black talent. Titans make a humping noise, as if they've just stayed awake. Hunters clean their nails with their knives and look at you like you've grown a third eye. But when you've spent your life searching for the arcana for ancient power, you have the urge to reach out and educate others, especially if you've had one too many. Nah. She's not my type at all. We play dice, cards, war games, you know, the usual stuff. I've never tried to show off before. I don't know what came over me. I had a broken vertebrae in my pocket that I borrowed, yes, borrowed, I was going to put it back. But what do you think you are, my conscience? It was a fossil. It was mineral replacement, a rock, basically. They can survive a few hours in my pocket. Do shut up. The Cryptox weren't going to miss it. Everyone knows the Amkar were hunted to extinction. There's nothing to be afraid of, not anymore. Think of how mysterious the system is, I said. How much life sprang up when the Traveler came. Like the Amkar, you know the legends, the dragon that made promises, and I pulled out a fossil with a flourish. She pulled out her knife and started to pick the dirt from her nails. That set me off. You could never have brought down one of these, I said. Ever. Not the greatest of you. Not the greatest hunter. Not the brawniest titan. Her eyes narrowed. She said, oh, is that so? And I thought right then and there, she wasn't going to pass on the challenge. I've murdered a guardian, I thought. She's going to die, and it'll be my fault. I looked at the piece of spine in my hand and wondered, why did I say that? What moved me to such pride? Now, this is a great piece of dialogue that shows what kind of a head case the warlocks can be. He does state much life sprang up when the Traveler arrived. Like the Amkar, another mystery also sprang up, the Black Garden. Now, what may relate the two mysteries is that the Black Garden is thought to originate from the Void. The Warlock has stated that their class was the only one that could bring down the Amkara. Now, I believe this is because no other class is as knowledgeable about the Void as Warlocks. The Traveler came out of the Void that surrounds all things. Thus, we know that the Void is full of power. Gifted with the Traveler's Light, armed with the secret physics of the Lost Age, you will tear reality asunder. That is a statement of the Void Walkers. So to understand the Void, you could tear reality. This is another connection that I think proves where the Amkar come from. On the skull of the Dire Amkar, you see the flavor text that reality is the finest flesh, O bear of mine, and are you not hungry? Secondly, the Warlock doesn't understand what set him off. The Amkar, even the smallest part, can affect you. These creatures had powers that are hard to comprehend. In most societies, anything that is hard to understand is thought to be dangerous. The consensus, the governing body of the city, made a fateful decision. After a great deliberation, it was determined that the Amkar be made extinct. It was not an easy decision. Power had been attained from the bargains, and the city needed power. Knowledge had been gleaned, and the Amkar knew questions to answers that no one had known to ask. But the price? Uh, it was too high. No edict or forbearance seemed to stop guardians from seeking them out, driven by hope or vengeance or even despair. The call had to be silenced, so the great hunt did its work. And thus the Amkar were made extinct, their call silenced, the solipistic flatteries erased, and their great design, if it ever existed, broken. Of this you can be assured, O oh reader mine. Japanese mythology has a dragon that is said to have wish-granting power. Ryu were typically associated with water and had a jewel that had power over nature, the Chintamani stone. Interestingly enough, the stone is from Buddhism. 
The Amkar, also a term in Buddhism, is said to be one of four parts of the inner organs. It should be subordinate to the Lord. The reason for this is that the self cannot be present when one is in a state of Amkar. Going back even further, the Amkar is also a Sanskrit term related to ego and egoism. In the early days of Destiny's development, they had said that there were dragons that could grant wishes, but it seems that it was not without a price. Driven by emotions, guardians sought out the power of these creatures to set wrongs right. But what type of power could do this? I think the true power of the dragons lie in metaphysics. A term not easily defined, metaphysics is a branch of philosophy concerned with explaining the fundamental nature of the being and everything that encompasses it. The philosophy tries to answer what is really there and how to describe it. A metaphysician attempts to clarify the fundamental notions by which people understand the world. Things like existence, objects, and their properties, space and time, causality, and probability. In short, all of these terms help define reality. Metaphysical solipsism maintains that the self is the only existing reality and that all other reality, including the external world and other persons, are representations of that self and have no independent existence. If this is truly the power of the Amkara, a warlock's understanding of the universe may be why they were best suited to combat them. The Amkar knowledge and possibly the power they possess led to their end. But look at all the parts of the Amkari gear. Give me your arm, O oh bear of mine. Let me help you fill the world with teeth. Look at all this life, O oh bear of mine. There's so much left to burn. You will dream of teeth and nothing else. And the new gear, the sealed Amkara grasp. It drops another clue. Plating of the Amkara bones in silver helps quiet the auditory hallucinations, O oh bear of mine. Despite these being dead as we know it, they still talk to us. Are they telling us what we want to hear to meet their own ends, influence us in ways we don't understand? Maybe the goal is to be plated in silver because we can still hear them. Are they messing with our understanding of reality only to appear dead so that they would no longer be hunted? Perhaps they are defying extinction. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. On Venus, circling the citadel, we see them. What are they? Are they dragons? Are they Amkar? Bungie themselves calls them Batadactyls. Now if you observe them long enough, you notice that there are two different ones flying up there. One is larger than the other. The dire Amkar would be the larger of the two since that's what the word dire means. Could they hide in plain sight? If the Amkar have the power to control reality, then whatever your answer is, it is correct. As for myself, I don't think those are Amkar. They are extinct. Oh, viewer mine. <laughs> well, if you like this type of content, just hit the like button, or leave a comment, or if you just want to see some more, hit that subscribe button. But as always, guys, have a good one.